How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to apply a Voronoi texture to a 3D model that you can use for 3D printing. We'll be using Mesh Mixer for this process, and this video is really aimed at anybody who has little to no Mesh Mixer experience. So if you've never used the program before, don't worry, you can just follow right along. Here at the opening screen of Mesh Mixer, we have the option to either import a model, or we can use one of the models built in to Mesh Mixer. We're gonna select Import Bunny, and that will give us a model to work with. You'll notice this is still technically a surface. This isn't a watertight 3D model, and that's something we're gonna run into a little bit later as well. So we wanna figure out how we can deal with this. We're gonna use the select tool to draw a line, and that's gonna highlight all of the triangles around that hole. From here, we can select edit, erase, and fill, and flat remeshed, and that will give us a nice solid base for our model, and will also create a watertight solid. So when we think about applying a Voronoi pattern, we want to think about what that pattern really is, and we want to learn a little bit more about the model that we're going to be applying the pattern to. So if we look at the model, you'll notice there's three distinct elements on any 3D printable mesh, and that's a face, which is this triangle, a line or an edge, which represents the sides of that face, and then a vertex. And a vertex is any point where two more lines connect. So what we're trying to do by creating a Voronoi pattern is essentially removing these faces and only having lines connecting those vertex points. So with that in mind, you can look at a mesh like this and probably already see the problem with adding a Voronoi pattern to this mesh as is. Those lines are gonna be very, very close together. So let's go ahead and try adding a Voronoi mesh and just seeing what it looks like. We'll use that same select tool to select this rabbit's head. And with the head selected, we are gonna go to edit and separate. So now you'll notice we've got our rabbit body and we've got our rabbit head. I want to add the Voronoi pattern just to the head of this rabbit. So I'm gonna suppress the body. So I'm just looking at this mesh. You'll notice this is a surface and not a solid, which is important to that Voronoi process. Again, if you have a solid, you technically have two outer walls where with a surface, we only have one. So from this point, we can select edit and make pattern. And if we select dual edges, we can see our mesh is so tight that it's actually going to appear almost as a solid. And even if we decrease the wall thickness of all of those edges, one of the things you can see here is this is gonna produce a very, very fine mesh. This might work for your application, but typically for 3D printable Voronoi patterns, you want a little bit more of a open cell structure. So you can see this has created a very tight Voronoi pattern. And while it does have a really cool chainmail type appearance, it's not really what we want in a 3D printable file. So we're gonna go back and try that one more time. This time, before we create the Voronoi pattern, the first thing we're gonna do is select the entire model and we're gonna reduce the number of faces. This will have the side benefit of reducing the number of edges and vertices. So we'll reduce down 92%. So what I've done here is reduce the number of overall triangles. And you can see that here, as I move that slider down, the number of triangles decreases. So as you can imagine, this will be a much larger air gap than it was previously. I'll click accept, and now we'll compare the number of triangles on this body to this body, and you can see a pretty clear difference. So again, we're gonna go through that same process, and we're gonna select make pattern and select dual edges and we can decrease the element dimension size that will give us a thinner wall. And here is our Voronoi pattern. So this has very large cells and it overall it looks more like the open cell design that we were trying to get in the beginning. So by unsuppressing the body, we can see here, this is a pretty good approximation of the look I'm trying to get. I want large open cells here and a slightly higher poly count on the body. So this looks good, but it's not really printable as is. If we suppress that Voronoi pattern, we can see there's still a large hole here. So we need to fill this in order to 3D print it. So what I'm gonna do is using the same process as before, I'm just gonna select around that rim and go to edit, erase, fill and select flat remeshed. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a solid mesh on top of that hole. So now I have a solid mesh for the body and if I unsuppress the head, you'll notice there's actually a pretty solid connection between the two. So that Voronoi pattern is sort of resting inside of this mesh. So from here, I can select the body and the head and select combine. And that's gonna give me one solid mesh that I can use to 3D print. So from here, the next step is to export as an STL and send the file to your 3D printer. 
And that's it. Now you can create Voronoi models of your own. I've had a lot of fun with this process and I've made some really cool parts with it, and I'm looking forward to seeing what other people make with it as well. If you've used this process before, I want to hear about it. Go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know what you've made using a Voronoi pattern. As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.